Good morning. Good morning. God bless you, people of God. Sometimes all of us are tempted to think that God only uses clergy to do church ministry. We might think the ministry belongs to a professional class of ordained people. Friends, that is simply not true. Ministry does not belong to the preachers. It belongs to all of us. We are all called to do works of service, as the scripture says. Works of service is another word for ministry. Our text this morning is Ephesians 4, 11 to 16. The apostle Paul ministers the word of God, gospel ministers, he says are very important. And he lists these gospel ministers. These ministers helped establish the Christian church in the beginning. Pastors and teachers are among those Paul mentions. Both the Old Testament and New Testament also show us God gives spiritual gifts to the church. In the New Testament, we see various kinds of gifts. There's lists of gifts. In the New Testament, there's also some in the Old Testament. Romans and Ephesians, 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 12, 7 tells us, Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. Paul explains to the people that gifts are for the common good, to build up. They are graces, they are gifts, they are charisms. And there's a variety of them that we, we see mentioned in the scripture. Wisdom, knowledge, faith, healings, miracles, prophecy, discernment, tongues, administration, helping, service, which is like deaconship, encouragement, giving, directing, and caring, showing mercy, and more. These are not merely natural gifts. These are spiritual gifts from the Holy Spirit. We see many of these gifts operating in the book of Acts. We see them operating today in the church worldwide. Truthfully, a lot of Christians don't understand gifts because the church doesn't talk about gifts very much. You know, few of us think of administration as a gift, but administration is a gift from God, a spiritual gift. There are a lot of churches that have bad administrators. They wish they had the gift of administration. Be thankful if you're a church that has a good administrator. And be sure to thank that person. Thank God for gifted administrators, anointed administrators. In 1 Peter 4.1, Peter himself rejoices that so many have been blessed he says, as each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. If you're a Christian, how are you serving the community that God's called you to with your gift? Are you serving with your gift? Do you know that you have a gift or more that God has loaned to you? These gifts are given to all the people of God to serve others in the world. An elite ordained clergy class does not own these gifts, nor does any individual who has been so gifted. The gifts are owned by God. God is the giver of all good things, and these gifts belong to him. However, this morning we're looking at a different kind of gift. We're not looking at those spiritual gifts. We're looking at the gifts that God gives of people. People are the gift. People who are given by Christ to the church. You can think of pastors Charles, Joshua, Joanna, Sharon Huey as gifts to the church. Gifts to the church. Christ himself, the scripture says, gives 
ministry gifts to the church. That's my first point. Christ himself gives ministry gifts to the church. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, pastors, and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. Imagine that. In the Bible, Paul tells us that Christ himself is the giver of these human gifts. These apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. Why? Why does he give gifts? The scripture is very clear. To equip his people. You. Are you the people of God? He gives pastors and teachers to you, to equip you, to, that the body of Christ may be built up. Jesus has a plan, a very deliberate plan, a good plan. His plan is for the people to do works of service, to do ministry, young and old, all kinds of people. His plan is for these called men and called women to give their lives to build up the church of Jesus Christ by preaching and teaching. They are here because they have been called to be here, ordained by God to be here. Many of us are quick to criticize such men and women. We accuse them of being too judgmental because they speak the hard truth. And on occasion, we don't want to hear the truth. Did you see that movie? It makes us uncomfortable. People get upset at pastors for many things. For example, oh, the trouble a pastor has if he or she refuses to officiate a wedding for a Christian and a non-Christian. Many times in my life I've seen this, where someone in the church gets upset. We pay your salary? Why don't you, why don't you marry the couple? The pastor thinks it's not the right thing. People get upset at pastors for many things. The pastor didn't shake my hand, forgot to greet them, forgot to talk to me. Someone, the pastor, to visit everyone in the church and the congregation all the time, all the sick people all the time. Pastors cannot do that. Impossible. If you want a pastor to preach a sermon, he cannot visit all the sick people. Maybe if your church is 10 or 20, maybe 30. But when you get into the hundreds, a pastor cannot do everything. Now, thank God for pastors who do visit the sick. But the visiting, most of the visiting is on you. Most of the visiting is on the church, the people of God. And the pastors are to give you the skills to do that. Friends, you are the people of God. Your ministers, pastors, and teachers, they train you for your job. Their preaching is an expression of love because Jesus calls them to care for your souls through the spoken word. And you can care and love others. These gifts were crucial to the early church. I mentioned a few apostles, the early church. The apostles set the foundation for the church. And there were the 12, and then there were Paul and Barnabas, Apollos. The best text that we have even suggests that there was a female apostle named Junia in Romans 16.7. There were prophets in the Old Testament and New Testament. There were evangelists. From the very beginning, people were evangelists. Men and women evangelized. They spoke the word of God. They proclaim Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. And then they're pastors and teachers. They're given to look after and shepherd the churches, to teach and train the people of God, to avoid false winds of teaching. And the scoundrels, you know, there are scoundrels. I don't know how to say scoundrel in Chinese. Do you know how to say scoundrel in Chinese? How do you say scoundrel in Chinese? Anybody know? What is it? Well, yeah, the people that try to confuse the church. Pastors warn us because they love us. Thank God Christ gives these gifts to the church. We do not give pastors to ourselves. We do not appoint pastors to their ministry. 
We do not own them simply because the church pays their salary. They are called and owned by Christ Jesus, and that is a good thing. In sending them to us, Christ breaks down many walls, barriers of social status between Jew and Gentile, rich and poor, racial differences, gender differences. Christ calls who he wants. It is Christ who ordains them and gives them to the church. We read Paul's words, Christ himself gave. Today, when we lay hands upon our pastor, we acknowledge God's work on a life of that person who has already been called, already been tested, already been gifted by God, and we pray for her. Yes, I know that today some people may think a woman should not be a pastor, a woman should not lead, should not be ordained, but from my view and understanding of Scripture, along with many, many other Christians worldwide, Bible-believing Christians, God has been calling women from the start of the church to this day. We have evidence to support this in the scripture and in church history. Today, I'm thankful that we have male and female ministers present, participating. Minister Pastor Dorcas. I think of Sharon Huey, who's been faithful to this congregation for many years. A lot of you don't know, Sharon took a church in Edmonton, Canada many years ago and turned it around and made it a thriving church in a city in Canada. God calls men and women to the ministry. Today I'm thankful that we have ministers to support this ordination process. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Just as the Spirit of God touched Mary, the mother of Jesus, the Spirit of God touched Mary, the mother of Jesus, who carried and bore the incarnate Word of God. The Spirit of God works in the church today, empowering, calling, and equipping men and women for kingdom service to proclaim the living word of God, Christ has called Joanna. And Christ may be calling a man or a woman in this congregation. Now let me tell you, it is a hard thing to be a female minister, pastor. They go through a more difficult road than men. How many of you all think that's true? Yeah, m most everybody knows. It's a hard road for women, but if they are faithful and dedicated and stick to their call, God will open doors. My second and last point is this. The goal of these gifts is to help the people of God because become united and mature. Until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of God. These gifts, these ministers, are agents of Christ, the living word. They teach and declare the truth to us and bring unity and maturity and health to the church. Why are they here? They are not here to be people pleasers, to go along with the flow, or to conform to social societal norms in a fallen evil culture. Friends, the moral vision the moral view often found in the Washington Post, the Wall Street Journal, the Democratic or Republican parties is not always good and true. Let us all vow to follow the Lord and not the popular culture, trends that come and go. Our pastors are important. They speak God's word no matter what. They speak about eternal truth. This means like all faithful ministers of the gospel, all faithful ministers of the gospel will advocate for the innocent human at all stages of life. They will teach us about God's act of creation of humanity, male and female, in the image of God. They will address the ongoing moral collapse of society and resist the slide toward evil. 
They will speak <clears throat> when many are silent. They are a model of our great Lord and Shepherd, Jesus Christ. They are healed humility, gentleness, patience, forbearance, and love. These are the things that make the church a healing experience where brothers and sisters in unity love one another. A pastor is not the master of the church. Jesus is the master of the church. 1 Peter 5.4 tells us that Jesus is the chief shepherd. Pastors are under shepherds, called to serve Jesus, to please Jesus, not you and me or the church. There's a quote that I like, I've heard several times. It is true that a pastor is a servant of the people, but a pastor is not the slave of the people. They are not his or her master. There is only one master, <clears throat> even the Lord Jesus Christ. I should have brought some water. Anybody have some water? You're good, I'm good. Oh, thank you. I'm taking, I'm taking your water. <laughs> I have two minutes to go. <laughs> in Ephesians, Paul writes about God's purpose for humanity. God wants to create a new humanity through the cross, where slave and free, Jew and Gentile, rich and poor, male and female, are united in one body, one church. Barriers are broken down. And he uses pastors and teachers to break down those barriers. Pastors and teachers are used to break down barriers. The last verse makes it clear why pastors are crucial for the church. Then we will no longer be infants, tossed back and forth by the waves, and blown here and there by every wind of teaching, and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. If we don't have pastors that are good, then we have churches full of infants. And an infant is cute, but often an infant is not mature. And it causes problems in the church. It causes fights. Pastors develop in us the Christian maturity and the Christian character that I mentioned earlier, humility, patience, love. Let us pray and hope that our pastors are faithful to their holy calling in a very evil age with immorality and wars and attacks on the family from every place, every corner, even from within the church where people are often silent and avoid speaking truth. The pastor has a profound responsibility to speak the truth when people may not want to hear their words. But always the pastor will speak with wisdom and love. Please pray during this worship service of ordination. And I encourage you, if you want to come up and pray, like Charles mentioned earlier, feel free to come up if you're a Christian and pray. You may not be able to fit in, but you can stand close and pray as the ordination process continues. God bless you.